so good morning everyone so you saw us on the last video doing uh, fittings for the windows and fittings for the door our job for today is to do a little bit more adjustments on the windows well the windows are actually in a little bit of adjustment on the door and filling all these gaps just morning. above here <laughs> Uh, all of these gaps is what's going to be our job today. Yeah, filling in all of those. So we've got uh, we've got quite a lot of wood. Uh, we ordered th an extra thirty panels, but uh, we're not going to use them all. Some are to replace some that we borrowed. So we have all of our wood here. These are the panels that we've been using for the fascia for the cladding of the house. Um, they are two point six meters long uh 25 centimeters wide and about two and a half centimeters thick so they're quite sturdy quite sturdy panels and what we're going to be thinking of doing with them as well is using them for our decking we're going to put a decking on the front of the building and uh, we think these panels will work out quite a bit cheaper than actual decking panels the they are a little bit rough so we will have to do a fair bit of sanding I think on them but overall it's going to save us a fair bit of money uh, to use those instead so that's our thoughts at the moment anyway so today we're going to get on with filling those gaps and uh, bring you along with us so the idea is with these woods these panels is to get them right underneath here and cut out for each of these rafters to cut out a bit of the wood we're going to put this in place and then sort of nick out for each one of those each one of those rafters so that's what i'm going to be getting on with today so my only difficulty at the moment is how i'm going to lift a panel up there and mark these rafters because these panels are actually quite heavy um obviously i could use a measurer that was my first thought that's be the easiest way of doing it but i'm not sure yeah, that's the way to go. Rather than lifting the panel up onto it and trying to mark the panel, I think I will actually just measure each noggin or each rafter and see if we can do it that way instead. Sounds a little bit easier. So on the first board that we're gonna put across here, we have a rafter, another one, and another one. So I've measured the gaps between these two, or should we say between these three rafters, and transferred that over onto the wood, onto the uh, decking board here. And uh, yeah, just marked it off. One there, one there, and one over here. That's the measurements. Let's give it a go. Pardon, love? There's no fruit on the wood one yet. After all the blossom that we had and the bees were like, woo, and it was buzzing. There's no fruit on it this year. Isn't that quite odd? Yeah. Well, I, don't know, I don't know how the cycle works, but I would have assumed that the fruit would come after the blossom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, the bees were buzzing, weren't they? It yeah, was, it was like humming. It was just like, woo. Ah. The whole thing was humming. Oh, well. Spring. I'm not sure then. Well, maybe somebody would be able to explain why we don't have fruit. Yeah. It is quite odd. It had a lot of fruit in it at the end of last year, like old fruit from the year before. Perhaps I'm missing something in the cycle that mm. I don't know about. Mm, maybe. So I'll fold it like that. You see if you've got it on the end. So I'll also have to measure that one as well. Ah, they're a little bit off. Oh, there. So these were my original lines when I did it by measuring uh, using a tape measure. Didn't really work, but these are the actual lines when we held it up <laughs> on the wall. So I'm going to do some straight lines on this now. And that's the length of board that we need, isn't it? Did 
just got further out as, as, as we went along the line there, didn't they? Mm -hmm. So they're marked out, now we're going to have to cut them. So we've got our electric saw, I think. That's the way to go with these, isn't it? Yeah. So then we're coming in, how far in are we coming on these, did we say? Seven. Seven. Oops. Is it that one or is it the short one? It's the long one. Okay. So seven and seven. Good. And on this one, the long one again. Seven and seven. That's how far we're coming in with behind. our saw. Shall I just do that by hand? I think it would probably be quicker with that one. It's just getting it accurate. Depth wise, accuracy, this could be the problem. See how you go, see what you want to do. But you've got a third one here as well. Yeah. Right. I just wanted to try it with this first, see how it works. Yep. Okay. Okay. Give this a go. Shall we? just to do it by hand yeah I just go in as far as I can I'll do the rest by hand a slight change of plan the battery has run out in the electric saw even though we had it at green yesterday and we still continued to charge uh, it looked as though it was fully charged we've managed to get what, two cuts out of it and it seems to have gone flat so we're going to obviously need to go and get that charged but in the meantime uh, I'm going to cut these pieces by hand. Do you want to come and hold this for me so I can saw it? If you don't mind. I can either hold it or I can go and get the other thing. Oh, I'd rather do this by hand, it's easier. That is a mess. This is easy. Okay, so we've used the hand saw, as I said, yes, to uh, saw this part of it and this part here, and then just a few chisel uh, taps into here. Not many, because we're working with the grain, it's coming out really easily. So a few chisel taps and then, uh, yeah, then it comes apart. A bit of a bright day today though. It was quite uh, a dull day yesterday. So we maybe we should have done this yesterday. I think what we'll do is we'll move to the other side of the uh, of the house, I think, where it's a little bit more shaded to try and keep out of this sun. I mean, it's beautiful, don't get me wrong, but you can, uh, you can get a sweat on quite quickly. <laughs> okay, I was wrong. The battery is still fully charged on the circular saw. I just think that the battery wasn't fully pushed in. It has to be, like, pushed in fully for it to work. So, uh, so yeah. But to be honest with you, it's a little bit easier to do these smaller cuts with the handsaw anyway, so I'm quite happy to do that. Elaine's got up to get the Bluetti in order to charge that. However, we also need the Bluetti to, uh, to do some sanding today as well. So not a wasted journey. So <laughs> ah, I don't know. I'm not sure about this one, but uh, yeah, fully working. Fully working now. So... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened there. Okay, so that's not a bad morning's work. We've managed to get all of the top cladding panels in place for the back of the uh, of the tiny house. Um, we're leaving this till a little bit later because this is going to need some some angles cutting using the circular saw. And we've got our first panel ready and up on the front. Just a small panel there. So we're gonna go off for lunch now. We're gonna come back and we will do this second panel on the front. And it's coming along quite quickly actually, isn't it, Elaine? Yep, that'll be the front. 
hands are back completely finished up to roof height it will be so it looks tidy i think we might get it done today yeah mm -hmm. possibly yeah and we may have some help this afternoon to help with the the yeah, slopes the slopes yeah yeah slopes and the angles because they're going to be the confusing bit maybe okay so off for lunch now and we'll catch you when we get back after our lunch Enjoy break your lunch. <laughs> not quite sure what this phenomenon is would you like to comment sir the weather yeah um well it was perfectly warm and perfectly sunny this two morning minutes ago. well two minutes ago even yeah but all of a sudden the clouds come over we've had a bit of hailstone and now it's quite heavy rain. Yeah, I'm not quite used to this. Oh, Little puddles. <gasps> Just having a quick water break now that the rain's stopped and the sun's back out. So we've got our um, last long panel on the front and what we've been doing is getting it into place at one end with one screw so that it can still pivot and then using this high tech spare plank and a good kick method we're boosting good. the other end of the plank up so it's making a straight line with the roof and it seems to be working just having a quick five minute break a little bit of a uh, little bit of a drink just thought i'll show you the excitement that is the nissan truck nissan i think it's called d21 um king cab uh, from yeah Nissan D21 King Cab, I think they call it. Uh, pretty cool. It's a pretty cool car. I am now starting to uh, get the love back for it again. We've been without it for so long, so it's uh, taken a bit of getting used to to have it back again. But do you know what? It's pretty cool. And it's nice to see it back down here on the land. Yeah. A little bit higher. Yeah, I think that's about it. You gonna go for it? I think that misses the screws. Good. Yeah. Lovely. And then this one. Down. We've got the cross beam here, so I can go straight into that. Okay. I think it would be quite a nice tight fit by the looks of it, so I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Yeah. why we don't do time lapse isn't it it's a horrible <laughs> and that's broken so i need another one of those if you oh, don't mind heavens, you're so demanding always when you get a camera on yeah so here we are at the top of the house <laughs> put it on the front board and then once we've got these front boards on then it's going to be a case of the sides and they're going to be a little bit more fiddly because they're all at a bit of an angle yeah we have to cut some angles and things like that so but yeah that'll be still Will look really nice once it's done it's getting there there you go thank you very much lovely okay lovely. we've got the last two boards in up above the door so that's the whole front and back has now got all the panels on so that's looking absolutely fabulous what's also happened today is the edges for the windows have been measured and cut um, so it will frame completely all the way around and sort of make a runoff for when it rains and we're about to cut the noggins that are going to fit on the inside so that the um, hinges for the door have a lot of support because the door's going to open this way. Yeah. So we need some noggins on the inside here to support the hinges 
and that's the whole front of the garden house finished. Yeah, because the door is going to be fitted. Yep, the door is, it's had its first fit. Yeah, which they saw on the last yep. video. And uh, just needs me still to get the, the wood preserver and everything on it, the paint on it. Yeah, so we're going to put, that noggins, what people call, what we call noggins. I don't know if people will call them noggins. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. What but we can show you what a noggin is. I think we yeah. did on the last video. But uh, yeah. so a noggin is just basically. So it's. it's, it's uh, I'll show it on this side. Well, yeah. sorry. It's the horizontal <laughs> that's going yeah. between the two verticals. Yeah. So these are your uprights, and then we've got one noggin. Noggin. That's what we call it. So over this side, because the door is going to hang from here now. Yep. We're going to have three equidistant here. And we're just about to cut and fit those. Yeah, 55 centimetres times three. Times three. Let's go for it. Yep, and I think the rain's on its way back because we just had a lot more thunder. Yeah. So, so it's yeah. been really warm the last, I don't know, hour? Yeah. Yeah, hour and now again. it sounds as though thunder's on the way. Mm, and then rain again, yeah. Next one's cut and ready to go in place. Yeah, looking good too. Right, that's our three noggins. One, two, three, all in place. And done for the day, I think. We're just quickly tidying up and the thunder is coming and the thick clouds so the sky's getting quite dark hopefully we'll get some more rain the rain was on its way and we wanted to capture as much as we could so no more filming of the walls we got on with the guttering good afternoon <laughs> um, so I was looking at the weather and the weather forecast said you're going to get a couple of days of heavy rain and we haven't had rain for months so <laughs> we do want to put we do want to put guttering onto the garden house um, but we thought we would have all summer to get that sorted out and be ready for when the rains come in the winter and it's raining as you can hear so, what we decided to do was, we nipped into Castella Branco this morning. We got um, an extra piece of guttering and a few more brackets and some of the special brackets that you use to attach to the roof. And we are now going to put the guttering up. We're reusing the guttering that was already on the front of the village house because it's not greatly successful um, the the top that we have between the house and the guttering is just not solid enough to for the water to run so the water tends to run off the end of the top and not into the gutter so rather than buying all the stuff again which is pretty expensive we have taken down what was on the village house and it's all sitting on the back of the truck. Max is wandering around wondering what on earth is going on with the weather. So when we left the house it was dry and the one two minute drive to get here and now we're in rain but He's looking for a good drink, so I'm just going to get him a drink and then we're going to start working. Nice and dry inside. Yeah, <laughs> it is, isn't it? Perfect. Yeah, really good. Uh, amazing. All yeah. The sun just rained. Yeah, it was like red hot, wasn't it? A really yeah. warm day today. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, from nowhere, well, obviously from the clouds, but from nowhere, <laughs> uh, rain just came, yeah. Yeah. But we'll try and capture some of this water. Yeah, we'll get some of this, uh, get this yeah. guttering up. It's 
going yeah. to be, be really good if we can capture some of it. It's already shooting off there already, so I'm just like, ah, we'll try and capture some of that. Yeah, so there wasn't any forecast for today, but there was sort of light showers were forecast tomorrow and heavy rain Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, that's so what we were trying to get it ready for. Thought we had a day or two to get this done. Yeah, yeah. We have. We, we have. can work in the rain. Yeah, yeah. This is what I used to like about being in the van, though. The sound of the rain on the roof. It's mm, very it is. soothing. It is, it's nice. Yeah. It is. Is it good, Mr. Max? Is it nice to be dry? <laughs> Here we've got the really dirty one that you can see. This is one we've taken off the village house, our downpipe. This is a new one that we've bought um, because the garden house is wider than our village house. And there's another section there that we're reusing again. Yeah. Plus all the little ends. These are the bits that are the most expensive, aren't they? This one. Yes. This that's... like um, that joins your two sections and your downspout. It's about and six euros. Yeah. Is or that oh, that one more. I think. I think the little end caps are six, okay. and that's about eight or nine. That there, and that will be roughly where our downpipe comes. Would that be about right? I think so. With an IBC yeah. then... directly underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. So we can kind of work with those as they are then. Mm-hmm. Okay. Have you been swimming, Max? Have you? Have you been swimming? Yeah? You're all soggy. Go on then, give yourself a scrunkle. Yeah. <laughs> you have. You've been in the pond. Do you want to talk us through all the bits that we've got to put this together? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we've got a few pieces. It's quite a simple, straightforward way of doing it, actually. Quite like it as a system. So obviously we've got the, the lip of our roof here. Yep. And we have these angles, which I really think are such a simple way of putting guttering on. <laughs> Just as it drips on you. And that hooks onto there, like that. And then it tightens into the roof. And then once we've got that, we then have this system. So that's that's where the roof is. And then we have this system here, which holds the, the guttering in place. We might have to bend this a little bit just to get the angle right against yeah. the roof. Mm -hmm. But as you can see from that, it just holds the guttering really well. And it also has these adjustments. I'll show you on a different piece. So these sit inside this space here and they can be adjustable for water flow. So you can lift the guttering up a little bit. Sorry, that would be lowering the guttering or lift the gutter up a little bit. So like you get that. your floor from one end to the other yeah. to direct the floor. So you can adjust for your flow. Yeah, like that. Yeah, cool. I think they're a really simple, really good idea, especially for this type of roofing. Anyway, the angle, as I explained a little bit earlier, may need a bit of adjusting depending on the angle of the roof coming into here and we want that to be quite straight down compared to that angle on the roof so I'm just trying to just adjust that angle slightly that's all just like that using the bed of the truck <laughs> and a bit yeah. of brute force I'm just kind of putting that angle down a little bit like that okay sorry so that'll be the roof going into there That'll and that be, comes down more comes down straight. more straight. Okay. There we go. There we go. The grey clouds are gathering and just had some thunder. Oh, I we might get some more rain because I was just going to say I preferred it when it was raining about <laughs> 10 minutes ago. Yeah, because it's, it's really, really hot now, now isn't now it? Again. Yeah, really warm. Piece one in place, second piece in place and the third piece in and that's the fourth and final piece on. 
what we're going to do now is just put an extra support in the middle of this long section just to hold it up a bit. So that's our middle support in and what Darren's doing now is checking the floor because we want the water we need this side to be the highest because we want the water to flow off the roof into the guttering and down this way then our downpipe will come here and into an IBC. We've moved the IBC into place. We've worked on the level of the guttering so that the water will flow towards this end. And now we've got our downpipe and we've cut it so that it sits here inside the IBC. What we don't want is anything getting in there, like mozzies or debris, anything like that. So we came up with this ingenious plan of using um, an old one of those bags that you get like a forever bag from the supermarket a little net bag net bag and yeah. um, for your fruit you get your the fruit and your veg yeah. rather than using a plastic bag every time yeah and it's doubled and it's held on with the cord that came on the bag so that's gone round the neck of the IBC opening so it's tucked right in there and through yeah. the hoops so it's not going to come out and it's holding the downpipe really tight in place. What that will also do is filter any debris that comes off the roof as it before it goes into the IBC and then just because Darren couldn't let it go <laughs> we've got um, a bungee on there as well just in case but I think the bungee is a little bit overkill no, but he loves a bungee. It's perfect. Yeah.